This video was brought to you by Marcus Biel, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stolenberg, Camp Power, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now sitting in Opel Astra E Sport Tourer. This is station wagon, one of the few station wagons out there, electric. So in this video, I will do a driving impression, summary, what do you think about the car? Like uh, instead of watching a bunch of uh, my videos, uh, you can watch this video and you should be able to get most of the, the essential information. So, um, yeah, we are now uh, cruising on the motorway and you can hear that the car is kind of noisy-ish. Not super noisy, but, you know, for a German car, it feels a bit noisy. Yeah, I have to admit it. I also tested it, of course, a noise test, and it came roughly on par with uh, Polestar 2, which is kind of noisy. And also, uh, maybe all the Model 3, but the new Model 3 is, is quieter. So it's like right there. So it's not typical German car silent uh, ride. And another thing I will show you, let me see, I, I, I think I cannot do it here. I had to wait until we turn around and then I'll go the other direction because uh, there are some bumps. Uh, I think it's Teleheve, yeah. Teleheve is. Um, frost time i think it's called on the other side but uh when i read the press release you know they say that they have tuned this uh this astra to be uh, sporty or firm or you know to have a, a nice stable ride for autobahn so yeah i feel like maybe the ride is a bit harsh it's not sure how to explain this, but um, you can feel the bumps, you know. Uh, recently I tested the uh, Highland, it was nice and, and comfy without being over soft. Here, I still kind of feel like it's a soft-ish like soft ride, but um, it's just that some, some of the shorter bumps tend to feel it better. So we can, we can try now soon when we turn around, I can get an impression of how it is. But you also see that I'm using Autostay right now and it's doing a very good job. I have driven 
1,000 kilometer challenge, and even on the twisty parts around Tarnum, where there's a motorway, right, 110 zone, the car did an excellent job staying on the lane, locked onto the lane. It doesn't, it doesn't just lose it or give up uh, without any warning and stuff like that. So, and also, it did not slow down in the curve like a Chinese car. So now I'll show you now. We're gonna turn around go the other way so uh, yeah this is a bit unusual because normally when I do those driving impressions uh, around Arlnabru there is not any 110 so I don't drive that far I actually have to drive quite far if I want to reach 110 so but now at least we can include some more more ways with some high speed yeah any Germans here uh, but uh, also this has the new drivetrain the old Stellantis drivetrain uh, is only 136 horsepower, 100 kilowatt. This is 100 and, uh, how much was it again? 115 or something? Uh, but 156 horsepower. I don't remember how many kilowatt that is. So, I mean, it's it's still fairly quick, but I feel like, wait, let me see. Uh, yeah, activation not possible. Okay, then, no, no, okay. So here, there will be this, short bumps maybe I, i'm actually i think i'll feel better if i'm on the left lane here 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 yeah, okay dunk 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 yeah there yeah you can hear it right so so i can feel that maybe actually oh i wonder maybe it was worse a little while ago when we had more uh, ice on the ground but then after some time now uh, stuff has melted so then you know the, <laughs> the road becomes more even yeah that was just a, a short stretch where we had some of that but you know I felt like uh, okay it wasn't as harsh as some of the previous Teslas like especially Model Y the first gen Model Y that came to Euro was quite harsh it wasn't that bad but yeah just to just to give you guys an idea, this car, the suspension, the ride, the comfort does not feel the same as, for example, a BMW i4, which is kind of similar size, right? So, so yeah, well, that's it. Okay, uh, how did they do it uh, in other th tests I did? Uh, range test, this car was quite efficient. Uh, I'm surprised. Maybe because the motor is not that uh, powerful. Uh, you can see I'm kind of bouncing a little bit. I should also comment more on the bouncing because this is front wheel drive. So it, it has this, um, it's, just, it's just the way front wheel drive works is that when you bounce over a bump, it might not get the grip versus rear wheel. I, I, I don't know how to explain this again. Uh, some stuff is not that easy to explain, but um, the way the car accelerates and decelerates also, um, let me just show you now. If I accelerate, well, okay, not much happening. There's not much happening when you're on the motorway like this because the car is not that powerful. But, you know, when, if you have rear wheel drive, when you regen, or if you have overdrive, it will regen on both wheels, or both axles. But here, it will try to regen on the front wheel, uh, which means that if you brake, no, if you use if you use friction brake, it will brake mostly on the front wheel, but also some on the rear wheel. But when you regen, it will only regen on the front wheel, and it tends to. Um, let's see, let me get off the highway here. Uh, so it tends to maybe cause the car to go, you know, to go more forward, you know, like dip more forward, right? But then when you accelerate, it tends to the nose tend to go up yeah so, so that's basically what i'm saying so that when you regen the nose dips down a bit when you accelerate the nose goes up and it, it's it's just nitpicking but um, i can feel the the thing going like that so so you just have to get used to it in the beginning, when I started driving this this uh, Astra, I came right from the, by, the, no, the I came right from the Volkswagen ID7. So of course, you know that's um, that's more expensive car, but it's at least you know more German than this car, even though this is manufactured in Germany. So uh, let me explain. Let me just try here. Okay, if I accelerate, K 
okay then the traction control kicks in because we are limited uh, traction but you see region yeah dip down a bit accelerate goes away yeah so just so it, but when i when when i don't reach it when i actually push the brake then it, it's different yeah but then well actually there might be some blending brakes here so th then it might still region on the front wheel only and then not uh, pull in the back so because yeah whatever so ideally for the best driving feel for me i prefer either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive not front wheel drive so um, yeah okay anyway back to the range test uh, i found that this car is quite efficient so it could be because it's kind of low and small and compact you know even though it's a it's a station wagon so um it did it uh, uh, quite well in the in the range test despite that it was wet outside and if i would do it now it would probably be even better result now with that uh, the road has dried out so at least that's good i also noticed that other stellantis cars also had good efficiency uh, despite that there might have been some kind of boxy semi boxy car uh, but except for for some reason the e28 was not uh, that efficient but at least uh, Corsa E was quite efficient also and this is also no, an exception quite efficient you get the appearance that the drive train on the Evelstantis cars are efficient maybe the motors are efficient maybe the gearbox and everything you know they might have optimized it for uh, like not too much uh, resistance or something like a friction or something right uh, but also since this is not an SUV crossover then you also have uh, okay aerodynamics and i also noticed that when i did 1000 kilometer challenge is that uh, because this car is not so tall and boxy it was not that much affected by wind the consumption didn't go sky high you know uh, but it's just this is the okay then the upgraded uh, drivetrain and battery so it has now the 53 kilowatt hour battery previous was 50 kilowatt hour battery uh, but it can officially peak at only 100 kilowatt i got 105 initially for maybe a minute and then it dropped to 95 kilowatt and then also for not too long and then it dropped to 85 kilowatt but at least you can maintain 85 kilowatt for a very long time until around i think it was 60 percent or something so it has actually a fairly flat curve so even though it doesn't charge that fast compared to the other cars that might go at 150 170 kilowatt like model 3 or something you know uh it's still okay but for long trip um i feel like the achilles heel here is the um, um is the, the the not so big battery so yeah let me just exit here i'm gonna drive a little bit in in the city now well uh, yes same so so for for a long trip like 1000 kilometer challenge is kind of extreme it's like the the you know worst case scenario uh it will do it in around 11 and a half hour in summer i'm sorry in winter in summer it might be 11 hours or 10 and a half it should be 10 and a half but um yeah not as fast as some of the other cars like id3 or model 3 or yeah, Polestar, but that's a bit more expensive. Or ET5 is also more expensive. So maybe not the fastest car for going long trips, but at least if you don't go that far, let's say 500 kilometers, that's still going to be okay. And when it comes to banana box test, space, yeah. How was that? Well, um, because this car is only 4.64 meters long, it's not that big car, then um, it didn't take that many but on the was it was 22 total and then but it was actually um wait how much was it again um i think it was eight in the trunk and that is pretty good eight is right on par with suvs or, or bigger cars at least so um so that's the advantage of having the station wagon you know so it depends what you what you're looking for uh, if you need big trunk then this is the car for you uh, and also you, know, you don't you want the suv or something you know but one thing i noticed was that uh, you probably also saw it in the initial shot is that the leg room in the second row is uh, it's very short or uh, i don't know small it, it's it's tight in the back 
So yeah, when I adjusted the seat all the way in the back, you just <laughs> touched the, there was no, no leg room there basically. But even when you have it in the most forward position, it wasn't that great. And also when I did, um, uh, when I did the interior view and I put a uh, child seat in the second row and then I tried to sit in the passenger seat, it was cramped. It was crazy that a Volkswagen ID3, which is a smaller car, you know, had better bed leg room than this Astra. So, yeah, that's just uh, one one minus you have to consider when you consider this car. Uh, but what else is it? Um, headlights, by the way, are really good. We have Matrix headlights, and I've tested them, of course, and. It shines nice and bright, and the Matrix stuff also has cool stuff, uh, and it works really well. Maybe not the brightest and strongest and widest uh, headlight out there, but at least it's above average. Good, good, good stuff, man. Good stuff, absolutely. Um, but when it comes to maybe I don't know how to say, like charging features or battery features or EV features, I feel like that's. A weak point of this car just like the Stellantis car uh, there is no preheating of the battery but however uh, as long as you're hammering it like I did well, for 1000 kilometer challenge the battery will st stay at high enough temperature to not cold get and you I will I was get consistently getting uh, 85 no, no actually I was consistently getting 100 and, and something kilowatt every time I plug in so that was at least good it just yeah but then it depends because I haven't gone to yellow where you have to drive slower and then in that case yeah maybe I will call gate right or it depends on the scenario because you know, okay I, I did like more like a, a a best case where I have the car in a garage, it, it's heated, but it wasn't that hot. It's only eight degrees Celsius. And then I started driving with 100% battery down to 8%. And of course, then you get really good condition to get good battery temperature and also uh, charge fast. But that might not be the case if you have more, uh, I mean, a different driving scenario where you leave the car overnight at 50% and then you drive drive to work and it's something like this, right? And you kind of drive a bit slow. Then you might cold gate and then you don't have any opportunity to preheat the battery before fast charging. Well, like is a polizai over there? Hmm. Maybe I should avoid it. Uh, it could be accident, could be, uh, who knows? But I'm also kind of curious what the heck is going on there. Let's go over there and check it out. <laughs> um, and what else is it? Um, I'm trying to think here. What what matters to you guys? Yeah. Also, when you navigate to some location, the car the navigation doesn't tell you how many percent you will arrive with. You know, uh, when you're charging, it doesn't show you how many. Well, it doesn't show you how many kilowatt you're charging at, but it does show you how many kilometers per hour you're charging at. But uh, you don't know how much how, how many kilowatt that is. And also, it shows you on the screen here. But then once you fire up the car to get some heat going on then wait did, did someone get pulled over yeah yeah yep yeah, yep yeah. some mercedes got pulled over maybe he drove too schnell yeah. but um um yeah it, it doesn't <laughs> like the it could you can see kilometers per hour charging but then once you fire up the car then that information disappears but at least we have percents that are charged in the screen. Uh, instrument cluster, that's nice. But I feel like the infotainment here is a bit, not sure how to put this, um, not super user friendly or updated compared to the competitors. I even feel like the ID software or in, you know, in the MBB cars, I even feel like they are better. Here we have music here, we have some navigation stuff. You can swipe here. You have a slightly different view uh, then you have AC in big screen here and energy and some stuff and then you can swipe more and then you have the map and you have this uh, it just shows you energy whether whether you are uh, uh, regening and now we're regening now we're outputting power 
but I was like, oh great, this is just like the Korean cars. And then I tried to swipe here. Wait, there is no other information here. And then if I click here, I was like, and then I get to the energy flow. But huh? And then it's kind of weird, man. There's a menu there, and then you click home, uh, and then you can swipe here, um, and then you swipe here for some drop-down menu. But I think you can even see it here that the drop-down menu here you have. Okay, there are some brightness settings, quick quick brightness uh, settings here. Okay, that's great. You have Wi-Fi here, some privacy, my device, but there's a lot of space here, not used. Like most modern EVs, for example, NIO has it, uh, ID3, ID4, or the MEB cars has it. You drop down or you swipe down, uh, BMW also has it, by the way. When you do this, when you swipe down, you can customize a lot of hotkeys here for stuff, right? You don't have that here. And also, uh, there is no keep climate on or dog mode. Okay, well, I don't expect dog mode or, or wifey mode or anything like doggy mode, right? Or camp mode, but at least to keep climate on. Again, MEB cars has it, BMW has it, Tesla has it, uh, NIO has it. You know, many, many cars nowadays, uh, BMW, uh, Mercedes has it. Mercedes even has a dedicated button for some cars. The keep climate on will then run the air conditioning or heating or cooling, whatever, you know, HVAC for usually half an hour before it shuts down to save battery. This car doesn't have it. If you want to do it, you have to go in the uh, menu here. Wait. Oh no, I'm in the drop down menu. I have to swipe up. I have to go in this menu here, HVAC menu, and then you go to preconditioning, and then you have to set a preconditioning schedule you know and i yeah so it's it's clumsy man so so i feel like uh features that i tend to find on many modern evs and the use interface and the way you you go into menus and configure the car or change settings it is clumsy in this car and it lacks lots of features it, Instrument cluster is okay. When you have a trip meter, you have some stats here, you know, whatever you want to see. But, uh, it, you know, maybe I'm just nitpicking because most people who buy cars, they don't care about auto state, they don't care about the navigation or anything like that. They just want to drive, right? Then it doesn't matter how bad or good it is <laughs> yeah i remember i was complaining about the auto stair on the byd han and then my neighbor my old neighbor at the uh, oliver no no not my neighbor's parents first they were interested in aqs they was oh they were so interested in aqs i was like yeah aqs is a nice car and then they they went ahead and they bought byd han i was like huh what it has bounce suspension and the the auto stair sucks it slows down in the curves like a Toyota driver. Well, they were super happy with the car. But I, I, I want to ask them, they never use auto stair or cruise control. They just want to drive manual. I'm like, okay, okay, well, <laughs> then it doesn't matter, right? And maybe they don't care about using the infotainment thing, you know? They, they, they use maps, right? Paper maps to navigate, or you just follow the sign, and when they get lost, they just ask someone. Maybe that's the way some old people uh, do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. So let me see. Let me drive around here. No wait, wait. Which lane am supposed to be? Oh, the, the the arrows on the ground they are washed out, so I can't see. I don't remember. But okay, let's just drive back here. So, but you see, what competitors do we have? We have MG5. That's the closest competitor. It's it's a Chinese car. Yeah. And uh, it's a station wagon, but it's kind of old. You know, it had existed in in um, in uh, China for a long time, but under another brand called uh, Ro Ro Rover or something uh, under. But that was you know, it's Syke, yeah. Syke is big, but at least that's a station wagon, similar size. I think even had more space. And. Uh, it's charging slower. Yeah, the MG5 is charging slower than uh, than the Astra E, and also the MG5 is a freaking Chinese car, so it slows down in the curves. Super annoying. You know, I even had some problems with the uh, handshake. I remember when I, uh, I, str I struggled big time. So, you know, if I had to choose between Astra E or MG5, I would take the Astra E any day, despite that the, the 
the infotainment might not be the best or stuff like that but at least you have the efficiency you i never had any handshake problems i use a lot of charger supercharger also ionity and stuff you know uh no problem and uh the auto stair is wonderful it just works let me try to test it now even on these roads you see it's active now it's steering for me you know that's that's uh, what i need at least Oh, whoa, 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 wait, 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 let me just, okay, okay, I just got a little bit uh, cold feet there, <laughs> but, but, you know, but I have to point out one thing, which is that this is a Stellantis car. When I test German cars, you know, there, there is just something distinct about German cars. When you sit in a BMW, Audi, Volkswagen, Porsche, okay, maybe, okay, but, uh, but at least, you know, more of the common cars, right? Uh, they have... They have nice door closing sound. They have nice looking interior. Okay, except for maybe ID3, but okay, most other German cars. Uh, here, I feel like the steering wheel is a bit small and not that soft as some of the other German cars, but maybe I'm just nitpicking. But then, okay, it wasn't that quiet as a German car. And uh, like, like you had to pull the stock towards you to activate high beam and then pull the stock again to deactivate the high beam you cannot push the stock away from you you know so i, I think the, the problem is that well not the problem but the the, the thing here is that you know, i might offend some french people here but because this is a stellantis car then it, it's not i mean it might be more french than german so if you look over a German car, an Opel, well, I mean, it was GM for a while, but it, it might not feel as German as uh, you would expect it, or maybe, or something like that, yeah. So, but I mean, is it bad? No, no, it's not bad, you know, don't get me wrong. It's not bad. I had lots of French car in the past. I had plenty of Renault. It's just that it just doesn't feel like German. <laughs> yeah, so just, I just, gonna get, just wanna give you guys as much like info, input, as possible, you know. So, yeah, I'm just, just strolling around now in uh, yesterday at night. It's nice over here. Uh, blinker sound. I'm not a fan of it, man. Let's listen. How is the horn sound? Let me just test the horn. Oh shit! There's a pedestrian over there. He's gonna be confused. Yeah, I should test the horn outside the city. I could wake up someone. Right? Now let's just test it when we are a little bit further away here. And I should also explain this, by the way. Why do you blink to the left? Well, it is to help other people. If I blink to the left now, left now it is quite obvious that I'm gonna go to the left. If someone is, okay, now this is not a good example. Let me show you, um, here, 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 here. If I blink to the left and there is a car on my right, uh, and well, this is, okay, actually this is a bad example. The roundabout is not big enough. If the roundabout is bigger, uh, the, the problem is that uh, at yes him we might not have that big roundabouts but my clue is that if the roundabout was big enough if i'm blinking left and there's a car here normally the, that car on the right needs to yield for me but if i'm just in the inner side of the roundabout they can just take the exit there they don't have to yield for me because i'm telling them that i'm gonna go all the way i'm gonna go deep into the roundabout yeah but actually, let me try something over here. I'm going to try some speed bumps. You just remember that now. So, um, yeah, but but the car is easy to drive at least. It's it's fairly comfortable. Maybe not that spacious. But if you're interested in this car, uh, I think you won't be that much disappointed. But you just have to know that, like, you know, the stuff I said in the past. Yeah, there, there's some speed, but it's kind of weird speed bump. It's just like a shallow speed bump with some cobblestones on it. Yeah, so, so you could just kind of go over them in a nice way. Yeah. So, uh, what else should I say? Um, I had something else I would want to say, but okay, what about um, the, the the video is already getting quite quite. Uh, there, there, there. Oh, uh, okay. The, the, those were the speed bumps I was looking for. Uh, maybe it was just one of them. But but 
uh, what what other competitors do we have? Well, that's the thing. We don't have many competitors. Um, oh, okay. I can, I can feel one of the, yeah some of those. These these are getting a bit harsh. Yeah, you see. So an i4 would float better over the bumps. Even the the Highland would float more over the bumps than that. And I think this is the last one. There. Okay. But but Neo ET5. No, there's one more. I forgot this. Neo ET5 costs a lot more. And also, you also have to pay for bus. If you don't pay for bus, then it's even more expensive. So, you know, ET5 Touring is not really a competitor. ET5 Touring is more actually uh, price wise, uh, more like a, like a Volkswagen ID7 competitor. So, yeah, what about ID7? Touring. Well, <laughs> that's gonna be more expensive. That's at least fifty percent more expensive than this car again. Right? What about uh, i five touring? Well, the BMW i five is already a lot larger and a lot more expensive, man. I mean, you can buy at least two of these uh, uh, Astra E for one BMW i five, and that's not even a tour. Is that? So yeah. So which means that there's only one competitor, which is the MG five I uh, mentioned. At least you want a station wagon. If you don't care about the station wagon thing, then, then uh, you're okay. What about the Model 3 Standard Range Plus? It has less space. It's not a station wagon, but uh, price-wise, they are kind of similar, around 40,000 euros. And the legroom actually in the Model 3 is a lot better than uh, this Astra. But then the Astra has better trunk space, actually way better trunk space than the Model 3. Okay. So, uh, which car should you go for? Should you buy this car? Well, I can't tell you which car you should buy, but at least I told you the pros and the cons of, uh, of this car. <laughs> but you know, if, uh, if, uh, oh, okay. yeah, so they're they supposed to yield, but he's going this direction and I'm also going this direction. So that, and then you blink out of the roundabout, you know, so that you're gonna, yeah signal what you're going to do actually that guy also blinked to the left i just noticed it but if you don't blink what could happen is that okay let me show you i'm going to come back to that soon i, I don't know why i need to explain to people about runabouts but i have to because people are asking me Many, many, many times when I do this test, and they be like, "Oh, Bjorn, what did you do? What did you do with that?" Well, um, it is to improve the efficiency of the roundabout. It is to improve traffic flow, so that people are not just sitting still waiting for no reason. But um, um, yeah, um, I, I had a point I was going to talk about. Sorry, sorry. This is this is the nature of my video. This this kind of rambling videos, which is that uh, it is just like a. It's like a conversation or a monologue. You listen to me, I had I has experienced this car for almost a week now and I have a lot of stuff to tell you. You see that guy is blinking? Okay, that's good, right? Look. If there would be a car over there on that side, in this direction, and he wanted to take the first exit, he wanted to go there, right? And I approach here, but I, but I just go like this without blinking. He would be waiting there for no reason. You know, that's why you blink. If you care about other people, you blink. If your self is Audi bastard, you don't use the blinker. <laughs> oh, shit. But, but I, wanted, I had to show this, but I almost forgot. Um, sorry, it was a bit late, uh, quick, um, quick exit there. Normally I don't do that. This is why I also do this at night. We, the backup camera is wonderful, man. Look here, you have this 360 camera and just like the other Stellantis cars, it will create this virtual 360 view, but it uses the like the history, so it looks like you you have 360 uh, camera, but it's just stitching together what it knew previously. Uh, it works, you know, as long as um, as long as stuff around you doesn't change since last time it was there but it doesn't normally it doesn't so so that's pretty cool that you have some virtual 360 camera yeah so so i mean 
It has lots of cool stuff and okay, uh, the Stellantis cars, they have been updating, you know, with faster charging and a more efficient motor and more powerful motor. So, but I, just, I still feel like, you know, I need to vent out this, right? I need to, I need to, um, I feel like I need to tell you guys my opinion about this Lotus car. And I feel like they are kind of a little bit behind the others. Like, if I would rate the, the platforms out there, we have MEB platform, Volkswagen, you know, Wagen, you know, they have MEB platform. We have EGMP platform from, uh, 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 for the Koreans, right? Oh, sorry, I'm a little bit late on the blinker. Um, we have Tesla platform. We have, uh, what else is it? Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure what the, what the BMW are doing, but, but at least you, you guys know the electric power platforms. And maybe a platform is wonderful because it's based on either front, uh, rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. They have the battery there. They have a motor. They have also an induction motor in the front and um, PM motor in the back so that if you have all wheel drive, you can then only use the, the rear motor to save uh, energy so you don't have to go permanent all wheel drive, right? They also have the drum brake to reduce maintenance and also, I suppose, to improve efficiency. EGMP, oh, that's a Polizei. I wonder if that's a Polizei that pulled over the other car. Okay, I think it was. Well, EGMP platform, it's 800 volt based. It's also wonderful. It also has, well, actually, it doesn't use the, the it actually uses two PM motors, not, uh, not uh, a mix like Tesla and Mercedes and uh, MVB, but they then have this, uh, the, uh, some, like a clutch, but it's not really a, a real, it's a, they, I don't remember what it's called again, but it's like a dumb clutch, it's only on and off, and they can then decouple the front motor while it's cruising. And what else is it with the EGMP platform? Yeah, EGMP platform also is either rear wheel drive or overdrive, drive, whatever uh, you want, right? But, the Stellantis platform um, is front wheel drive. And uh, what, what was the other problem again? Yeah, and also it's not that powerful because when you have the other systems, uh, platforms, you know, they, they because they are over, because they are rear wheel drive, they can have more power in the rear. You don't try to put two, 250 horsepower in the front, you're gonna, you're gonna get massive torques there. So, so, um, for me, you know, I have some opinions about uh, stuff and I, 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 my claim is that EVs should be designed to be either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. Front wheel drive is taking a shortcut because you already have a fossil design or fossil platform and you want to share the fossil platform with the EV platform. But uh, my idea is that it should be a pure EV platform because pure EV platform has no compromises. But if you have a shared platform, you have to make sure that it works both for fossil, but also for electric, you know? So since this platform or this car also exists in a fossil form, then there, there are compromises in space or efficiency maybe, or in driving dynamics, feel, you know? Uh, yeah, and uh, okay, I think that 156 horsepower is a bit uh, underpowered. That's just my my opinion. I think EVs they could easily have at least 200 to 300 horsepower. It doesn't have to be 600 horsepower, but you know, once you've gotten used to uh, 300, 400 horsepower, then there is no way back. Just like once you've gotten used to on your desktop at work, once you've gotten used to 24 inch screen, uh, you can't go back to 14 inch screen you had in the 80s, right? Or the 90s, you know? So, yeah. So that, that that's like maybe the, one of the downsides with this, this car, which is that it, it is in the, in the Stellantis platform. And the, the disadvantages you get with it versus going some of the other cars that has the pure EV platforms. And then when it comes to software, then um, at least they could improve the software part. Wait, where the heck are we now? Oh, we are here. Okay, okay. 
So they could make the, the user interface here better with uh, not this clumsy menu that is really, really uh, clumsy. You go here, application drawer, and that, this, this is uh, this is so old fashioned, all these icons, and then uh, you go to ADAS, and then here you have some stuff here, ADAS uh, settings, uh, and then uh, there is okay shortcuts functions here. You there is some stuff here. You scroll down. Your tutorials here. No, no, no. Okay, and then you, there's also a, a menu here for some more stuff. So it's a it's a messy user interface, man. And I feel like they are not really utilizing the the screen and the touch screen possibilities. Uh, so, but this could be improved. They could fix this right and they can add keep climate on they can add the, the stuff that i talk about many of the software uh, stuff can be improved or yeah so but okay anyway it was a very long speech um i wonder if this is the first time i talk uh, maybe a little bit negative about the um i'm not sure even sure what the heck is called this I, I just call it the Stellantis or the PSA platform, right? But you guys know what I mean, right? Because previously, I didn't really say much about that when I... Yeah, I think I had some rambling videos from one of the Stellantis or PSA cars, right? Yeah, maybe because back then, I didn't care too much or I didn't have too much to compare against. But now, after some years, I feel like the ID software, or I mean, in the MEB cars, they have been improving you know they, they they have preheating now and stuff you know they show you how many percent you will arrive with at your destination you know they have been making the id software better and better uh, same with other brands they also been improving the user interface but here when i sit here i was like huh hey, what this is almost more or less like it was uh, many years ago they haven't really improved that much except for maybe uh, sh start showing uh, present state of charge in the display yeah previously some of the psa cars they didn't even show how many percent you had <laughs> unless you plug in then you can see how many percent you have <laughs> so what you can do is that you can just bring your type 2 cable just pull over put the car in park and then plug it in you'll be like oh, oh yeah i'm on 50 percent battery left okay and then you unplug and then you go <laughs> uh, yeah okay but anyway i mean if I mean, okay i feel like i've talked enough about the car but um just to summarize you know it's not a bad car it's still probably one of the best uh, station wagon in this price range and in this well size but mainly the price range here you know for roughly 400,000 uh, or, or, or 40k euros then uh, I would say I would dare to claim that this is still the best station wagon out there yeah and also pretty cool I like the you know you guys saw it initially when I show you outside you know the, it has this cool uh, Opel look you know I, I like when you see the headlights uh this is the front headlight don't be like oh that's like uh is that opel opel cadet the opel i get like uh, vibes from the from the 90s opel you know i like that i like that they they have that opel identity even though it's um it's more french than german right <laughs> but yeah so anyway i'm gonna stop here and stop my rambling i have to say okay i think they're closed yeah, okay, they are closed, yeah. Put it going park. I, I need to point out one more thing, man. Um, before I before I stop, I just remember it now. During 1,000 kilometer challenge, um, I had to nap. And then, I don't know if this is not top spec or something, but um, you can, you have electric adjustable seat here, but no memory. But then if you want to push the seat forward, you have to do this. What the heck? huh okay <laughs> and then the passenger seat is different then you have the you have to twist to recline and then you also have the thing here so uh okay maybe this press car is not top spec but um a tesla gets uh, fully electric seats by default and also of course yeah but that, that's it okay that's different. Right, okay you're gonna hate on me but but the seat comfort wasn't that great for sleeping because I needed to have the car on and the problem is that after just 10 minutes it will go in some kind of resting mode and stop 
the air conditioning. So then suddenly I get no heat. And if uh, and the, uh, another five extra minutes or after 10, no, after 15 minutes of idling, um, it will shut down. Uh, well, it seems like it actually opens the contactors because suddenly then I will see the red battery icon. And then, okay, I don't have it now, but when I connected the car scanner, when I connected the OBD and stuff I saw in the car scanner, I saw that the 12 volt battery was being discharged. Uh, now, if I would, uh, yeah, uh, I would dismantle everything, but normally, like now, the, the 12 volt outlet, no, 12 volt would be at around uh, 12, 13 volts, right? The, vo the low voltage system. But when it was in that, like, stop state or whatever right then i noticed that the, the low voltage system was down to around 10.7 volts and i wonder if i if i kept going like that if i didn't turn off the car manually maybe it would drain the 12 volt battery yeah and also it made napping quite painful because um, the heater would turn off after just 10 minutes and i would constantly wake up just to press like this you not know, to fire it up again uh, and also I, I need to show you something else here is that it it has an engine engine start stop button yeah there is no engine in here by the way but if you do this like most other cars most evs you just do this right to, to start driving well guess what you cannot do that in the Stellantis cars because now the, the car won't go in gear and it says press brake and start and also there's another weird thing here by the way if i stop it let me check here yeah, yeah here the message here says to start the engine press the brake pedal and press start <sighs> to start the engine you have to do that no 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 <laughs> no that's that's incorrect even if, okay, Germans would say, yeah, nine, nine, there is an engine here. Yeah, yeah, engine means electric engine. Okay, okay, all right. But, but does it mean that when you press it here and you press start, you will actually start the electric engine? Then it needs to spin up then, but it, it's not spinning until you start driving. But okay, what I'm going to point out is that when you do this, you have to press and hold there for two seconds. Then it goes into the ready state. If you're too quick, then it won't allow you to drive. So that, that becomes a little bit cumbersome sometimes because when I enter the car, I'm like, okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. And, and I, no, no, no. And then, yeah, now, now, now it works. You see, now it works. But if I just, if I'm a little bit impatient or I just forget to hold it long enough, then I'll be in the non-ready state. Okay, now, of course, now that when I demonstrate, then it actually goes into ready state. Maybe because I'm already sitting here. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should, maybe we should do a more realistic test where I exit the car. Then, okay, and then lock it. And this is actually a more uh, typical scenario. I've been out doing something, you know. Uh, wait, no, oh, shit, oh, shit. Um, okay, I have to... Wait, now, now what? Now, now, now it won't unlock until, unless I... Huh? What? Really? I think the problem was that I, I locked with the... There, okay. Well, I had to... No, I forgot I had to walk away far enough, but whatever. I enter the car. Buckle up. Press start. Yeah. I actually press and hold long enough now. That's the thing. Uh, I have gotten used to it. So that's why it works for me. <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, this wouldn't be a problem for you uh, because you just... You get used to it, and then no problem, yeah. So, but the problem for me is that I move between many different cars, and then I learn one behavior on most other cars, and then here I just have to reprogram my brain for it. But okay, anyway, um, I think that's gonna be it, yeah? A long ass video. So uh, the question to you is, would you buy this car, or would you buy something else? Hmm? Do you wanna go for the MG5? Or you're gonna go for uh, ID7 touring. <laughs> anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.